Welcome everybody to Iden Gaming Channel. Today I'm going to show you an easy noob friendly guide to playing Enhancement Shaman for PvP. However, the rotations that you learn and the priority system can also be applied to that of PvE. So first I will say that the Enhancement Shaman, it is not the strongest class right now. In fact, it is the least favored. Having that said, it is a rewarding spec to play as it's just a ton of fun. So, first off, your enhancement. What does that mean? That means you do a mixture of spells and me and melee, so keep that in mind when choosing to play this class. For talents, you're going to want to go with Nature's Guardian. It's the easiest to use, it's always there, and it's one less global cooldown. Frozen power, that's pretty much what you're, what you're going to want. You can freeze them in place. Uh, like every five seconds before it DRs of course, but even then it's going to apply a slow effect uh, Third tier we got totemic projection. This is really all you're going to want to run with so you can uh, Drop your stun totem and then place it in a different position Before it goes off because uh, people just run away from it and you can also use it to stop them from being able to one shot your totem as well echo of elements you're going to want that uh, it basically you can use the same move twice sometimes three times in a row and I'll speak more of that later on Ancestral guidance while not the favorited it has been nerfed quite a bit I still use it because it's just there when I ascend and it's still you know it, It's a pretty decent here. It's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. So but Overall you're gonna want to go with rushing streams. That seems to be the uh, best one the best choice at this point in time Okay, uh, level 90, Unleashed Fury, that will um, increase the damage from your Lightning Bolt by 30% and your Multi-Strike chance by 5. Now, this is the best one because Multi-Strike is just king for Enhancement Shamans at the moment. Primary Elementalist has too long of a cooldown, it's just not that viable. Now, level 100, Liquid Magma, very good, it is very good indeed. The damage is actually upped when you go into PvP for some reason, I'm not really sure why maybe passive buffs from other classes, but it's usually around 1445 damage usually uh, I guess that's based on your gear and this will effectively spread around to all enemies but it definitely puts a lot of pressure on uh, two people when they're taking that consistent amount of damage uh, one versus one, this is the optimal talent that you're going to want for long fights, of course. If you just want pure burst, while Liquid Magma is good, Storm Elemental Totem can provide you with a pretty solid burst on an opener, but then again, it's got to replace your Fire Elemental, so that's kind of an argument there. But Elemental Fusion, that's what you're going to want overall. You can also apply this to your Flame Shock for about 120% uh, buffed strength to your flame shock including the unleashed elements now over to glyphs you're gonna want the flame shock glyph it's gonna heal you for 45 percent so if you buff your flame shock with two stacks of elemental fusion along with unleashed elements you're getting a pretty beefly uh, heal there I mean two to three K so it's pretty awesome uh, this is Mandatory, you have to get this glyph, the glyph of lightning shield. Uh, glyph of Pharrell spirits. This is a very good one, it heals you. Um, but some people would choose the capacitor totem depending on what they're fighting, and uh, also the ghost wolf because sometimes you need to go behind a pillar to heal for your healer to heal you. And if you're CC'd out the ass, we have only like one move to get out of CC. So, you would use this and it would reduce the effects of movement speed. So, you'd be able to get around the pillar in time to be healed, etc, etc. Now, now I will show you the basic rotation and or priority system for the Enhancement Shaman. And then, I will show you the advanced tactics and other moves you can use in combination to maximize your performance. So, your basic priority system is you want to keep Flame Shock up, use Lava Lash on cooldown, use Storm Strike on cooldown, 
and use Unleash Ally Elements whenever it becomes available. And Frost Shock if there's absolutely nothing else you can be doing. Now that's your basic priority and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So as you approach you would use Unleash Elements, put up Flame Shock, Lava Lash, Storm Strike, Lightning Bolt with 5 stacks, Frost Shock. And see now everything is on cooldown. I would use Storm Strike because it's first, Lava Lash, Unleash Elements, reapply that Flame Shock if you need to, if not, just use Frost Shock, Storm Strike, Lightning Bolt with 5 stacks, Lava Lash, Frost Shock, Storm Strike, Lava Lash over Storm Strike, so then Storm Strike, 5 stacks, that, reapply that, and that's pretty much your basic rotation, so you just want to keep up Flame Shock. Use your Unleash Elements first, then apply Flame Shock for its buffed damage. So along with the Glyph, as you can see, I'm getting healed for about 1 to 2k. Uh, then you would want to do Lava Lash until there's no more to do with it. Then you go to Storm Strike. Now, the complex rotation, of course. You would, as you're approaching your enemy, or if you're dueling, because I am a dual hero instead, usually, Put down your healing stream totem as it's counting down from 3. Put down your fire elemental or searing totem if that's on cooldown. Then you would use liquid magma once it gets to 1 or as your enemy approaches it in arena. And then you would unleash elements, flame shock, and do your rotation. And you can add an ascendance in there if you want to burst them down quickly. So the entire rotation would be uh, count counting down from 3 or as your enemy approaches you. Healing stream. Fire Elemental Totem, Liquid Magma, Unleash Elements, Flame Shock, Lava Lash, Storm Strike, Lightning Bolt with 5 stacks has the highest priority of everything, and then Frost Shock whenever uh, so everything else is on cooldown. So the entire rotation would be this. Healing, Fire Totem, Magma, Unleash Elements, Flame Shock, Lava Lash, Lava Lash, Storm Strike, Lightning Bolt, Ascend, Lightning Bolt, Flame Shock, Frost Shock, Flame Shock, and as you can see, this is the priority system that we're using. So, simple as that, my friends, simple as that. Once again, to recap, the basic priority system for a shaman goes like this use Unleash Elements whenever you need to apply flame shock and also use unleash elements on cooldown because it increases your attack speed along with multi strike for a short duration which really makes a huge difference especially when trying to acquire maelstrom stacks so again unleash elements flame shock lava lash storm strike lava lash lightning bolt lava lash frost shock Lava Lash, Storm Strike, Lightning Bolt. So as you can see, the priority system is just that. Now, I'm going to teach you the maximum burst and how to achieve it. Of course, everyone has their own ways, but this is the one that I found that works best to really make sure you burst them down. Now, of course, at the beginning of a duel, you're not going to be so lucky with performing this, but later on in the duel you'll be able to have that opportunity for sure. So once you have uh, all your cooldowns refreshed, what you're going to want to do is drop your stun totem, freeze them in place just like before, the same tactic. So you drop your stun totem, wait for them to walk, freeze them in place, teleport it, they stun. As you're casting Hex, they're going to use their trinket. It's going to usually take them about a second to realize they've been stunned. Maybe a little bit less, but that's more than enough time, usually. So you drop your stun totem, freeze them in place, teleport the totem to them, they're stunned, use hex, freeze them in place. Then, this is where your maximum burst is going to come from. Because if they've already used their trinket, you have what, like 8 seconds or something around that that they're going to be stunned? So what you're going to so what you're going to want to do then is you're going to want to drop your fire elemental totem use liquid magma take out your wolves unleashed elements flame shock 
and then ascend and then you go here and this is how that would look And it's really as easy as that, my friends. As easy as that. Now, I'm going to give some uh, hints on how to beat each class. Now that I've explained to you the priority system for Enhancement Shamans, it is now time to teach you some advanced tactics and how to survive and how to go about fighting. Now, you don't want to use Ghost Wolf, Frail Spirits, if you will, on spot. It's just too many global cooldowns. You're already going through so many that that extra second or two can really hurt you. And you want to save those wolves for when you absolutely need them, and I'll tell you why. It's because it also reduces the duration of CC effects by around 40 to 50 percent, or something like that. So, never use Spirit Walk unless you absolutely have to. You can root them in place and freeze them with Frost Shock. If you need to wait but a second or two to get to them, do that instead of using Spirit Walk because this is like your only ability to get out of a CC besides, of course, when Walk Totem. But too long of a cooldown, Frozen Power is better. You can use it on multiple people, it slows them down for a long time. If a rogue is about to open on you, or a Pharrell Druid, or a Boomkin, or really a DK or anybody. Don't use your Shamanistic Rage unless you see them using their cooldowns. Unless your health starts to drop really fast, don't use Sham Rage because you can waste it and that can be the difference from winning and losing. Again, only use Spirit Walk when they're too far away from you and there's nothing else you can do and you're taking too much damage and it'll take too long for you to get to them again don't use shamanistic rage unless they're totally going ham on you you've seen them duel you know what they do you know when to use it just pay close attention it reduces the damage you take if you're a dwarf link it macro it with stone form All right. Now, to survive as Enhancement Shaman, you want to use your, sp your Pharrell Spirits on cooldown once the battle is going. You want to also use Sham Rage on cooldown, but first save it for their initial burst. Now, another important part for surviving is this. Remember, basic priority, unleash elements, then flame shock. Now I'm going to do some basic priority damage here. Flame shock. No, Lava Lash, I'm sorry. Storm Strike. Amish Elements. Now, see, I have five stacks of Maelstrom here. Boom. 32k healed. Around 50, including the multi strikes. That's how you survive as an Enhancement Shaman. In fact, when you're dueling people and fighting in Arena, you will almost never use your stacks on Lightning Bolt unless all the heat is going towards somebody else. But actually, you can use those stacks to heal your allies as well for quite a good amount. So, surviving as an Enhancement Shaman is wisely using Spirit Walk only when you need to. Wisely using Sham Rage when you know they're about to burst. And using Frost Spirits on cooldown as before. And of course, use your Maelstrom stacks to heal you. Always be mindful of your stacks. Try not to heal when you only have four, but... Uh, if you're being CC'd and crazy stuff is going on, use it even while at 3 or 4 stacks if you really have nothing else you can do. That's how you survive. Now, for CC, to stun people, we only really have two things. We have Hex, and of course, Capacitor Totem. Now here's a, it's a little difficult to do, but here's a combo you can practice. Don't forget you have Totematic Projection. So, as a CC combo, that can really aid you in uh, bursting somebody down without them getting away from you, or CCing you. 
You can drop your capacitor totem and then use the totematic projection to project it to where they're at. Now, what makes sure this succeeds is what you want to do is you want to place down your capacitor totem. They're going to try to run away from it. So then what you do is very quickly freeze them in place where they are, then teleport your totem to them. So basically it would look like this. He's frozen in place technically. I teleport it to him and he's going to freeze in place. And as soon as he's stunned by that, they're going to use their trinket. So as soon as they're stunned, you want to start casting Hex. Okay? So you would drop the stun totem, freeze them in place when they start to run away, uh, then teleport the totem to them so they're stunned, and then hex them, and then you can go all out with your burst. Odds are they're not going to use both of their trinkets if they're a human, that is. So that's how uh, the best way to really maximize your uh, crowd control performance when it comes to duels and, of course, arena as well. In Arena, it can be a little bit more different, uh, but you can use that um, tactic to optimize how well you can uh, CC people. But you do want to save your Hex for certain fights where you need to make sure you can Hex the healer when you're trying to burst somebody down. And uh, using this tactic, you can also use it on a healer, so they can't be Weasley and get away from you. So again, a recap. how to How's the best way to CC somebody? so they're actually CC'd and you can go ham. What you want to do, drop the stun totem after they run away for a little bit, freeze them in place, teleport the totem to them, then hex them. So it, it would be this. Pop, freeze, teleport, and then hex. But of course I can't hex the dummy. By the time that totem goes off, your hex will be close to being done, being casted. And then you can go ham. And now I'm going to show you some of the most basic macros which are essential to playing and surviving as the Enhance class. You get to your macros by typing, by hitting enter, slash, type in macro, and then enter. Now, you only really need to macro grounding totem and wind shear. What these macros will do is say you're, for some reason, hard casting a heal, uh, you're hard casting a lightning bolt, something along the lines of any form of casting. Uh, sometimes even a split second can decide whether you win or lose in a duel and or in arena. So, hit new. Choose whatever icon you want. You can look online and do the show, the show tool tip so it shows you uh, the icon. But all of your icons for your class will be at the top. So you can just scroll down to the wind shear icon, type in wind shear, hit OK, type in slash stop casting, then hit shift enter. Now what slash stop casting will do is if you're casting a lightning bolt, it will stop you from uh, casting it any longer and it will allow you to immediately at any of the moment use that wind shear. So then you can open up your spell book, type in slash cast, then you're going to want to find your wind shear, hold in shift and then click wind shear and boom there it is or you can type it in. Drag and drop it to where you want and when you do that let me give an example. I'm going to start to cast a lightning bolt, and then I'm going to wind shear. Boom. Same with grounding totem. Boom. So, if, a, if I'm trying to hard cast a heal just to get some heals off while a mage is far away, uh, I can drop a, dr a grounding totem when they're trying to sheep my ass. And that's about that when it comes to macros. Okay, for a death knight, you can ground their death grip. When you're fighting a frost DK, once you see the frost start to sprawl around them, they're most likely going to try to burst you down as quickly as possible, three shot you, call you bad, and make you look like an idiot. But I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen, okay? 
at the beginning of the duel use use unleashed elements then use flame shock okay that's gonna put that good heal on you and of course as it's counting down to, for the duel to start you're gonna want to use your healing stream totem your fire elemental and of course the magma then use unleashed elements and flame shock that's a very good opener okay you're gonna be getting two heals from the flame shock and the healing stream totem go directly for the death knight so he doesn't use his death grip on you yet odds are he's not gonna waste it until he goes to full burst you now the minute you see frost like a frost storm to swirl around him I forgot what it's called but you know what it is I'm sure or you will and he's gonna go ham on you so when he does that use sham rage then use spirit walk drop your grounding totem see so when he tries to pull you right back so he doesn't waste his CDs it's not gonna work in fact it's not gonna work at all <laughs> it's gonna be redirected to the totem now he can stun you and he will but you're gonna be pretty far away having gone into wolf form and spirit walk so when a death knight goes to attack you he's gonna the duel's gonna start or in arena when he goes to frost just burst you down you're going to use uh, sham rage hold up sham rage spirit walk go away drop a grounding and right there he's gonna death grip that you're, but you're gonna be pretty far away see so then he's gonna stun you like right about here you'll probably get around this distance it's gonna take him a little bit to walk up to you and then most of his C's are gonna be done and you would have taken pretty much no damage during his burst how cool is that and you can pop out for our spirits as well as you're running but first put down the grounding now also when fighting a DK make sure you use healing stream totem as much as possible make sure you use your stun totem as much as possible as well as hex and always use unleash elements pretty much as your highest priority when fighting a DK why because you die so fast they hit way too hard this is gonna make you hit uh, sixty percent faster for six swings so you're gonna get a ton of maelstrom stacks and you're gonna be able to out heal and or heal enough to where you can survive and that's really the basic tactic to a DK on how to beat them to finish a DK off you got to tank him down to around uh, 30 to 20 percent health make sure his magic shield has been used and then ascend that way you can burn through his last remaining health fighting a Pharrell and or a druid period purge my friends keep hitting purge non-stop while you're doing your rotation you'll get better at the more you do it you need to spur you need to spam purge because it's going to continuously take off their rejuvenation and every other buff that they have and then you'll be able to DPS them down and that's pretty much it with a uh, druid a hunter when you fight a hunter of course as the duel is counting down use your healing stream totem your fire elemental totem and then your magma now unfortunately a hunter they're pretty weaselly they'll go stealth right when it gets to one so you waste all your cooldowns and you look like an idiot so if you know that hunter does not do that then just do this the normal put your healing down elemental totem magma totem and then go him but if you don't know that hunter what you're going to want to do is just put down your healing stream totem at first wait till it gets to one and then if he doesn't disappear unfortunately you have to to do this and if he doesn't go uh, invisible then use your sham rage because he's about to just literally three shot you and it's basically his auto attacks pretty much do more damage than an enhanced mount shaman does period so use sham rage immediately then put down your fire elemental totem ma or magma then follow the priority in which uh, I gave you already when he used deterrence whenever he uses that it's like spiraling swords going around him what you're going to do then is stop attacking him and immediately switch to his pet attack that pet to give you maelstrom stacks for a monk the minute they use karma just put down your grounding you're going to want to use spirit walk and then run away that's it freeze them in place and run far as you can 
until karma is done. Hug a pillar, hide behind a tree, do whatever you need to. And really, that's pretty much all you need to know with a monk. When fighting a mage, you just want to put down your grounding totem as soon as the match starts because they're going to try to sheep you and do some little bitch ass opener combo. Also, if you're fighting a mage, you're going to want to use uh, where is it? this glyph. Basically, if they freeze you in place, deep freeze you, you can use sham rage and it'll get you out of it. Besides that, purge their shield. It's totally, it's totally worth it. Uh, and just do your rotation, man. That's pretty much it. Also, at the start of the duel, a mage might go invisible as well. S and they most likely will. But if they, if they don't, then you can go him. But uh, you kind of want to wait, just like with a hunter. So you wouldn't want to really use your elemental totem as it's counting down from 3 and or when they're approaching you because they just might go invisible and wait it all out and then you're done. You're dead. So watch the mage that you want to duel, if, you, if you're dueling that is. Learn what they do. Uh, do they go invisible at the start? Do they not? Take all that into consideration. Besides that, you want to keep using Frost Shock as often as possible to freeze that mage in place. Do not use Spirit Walk until they rocket boots away with their little talent because they're going to get pretty far away from you and most likely ring a frost and freeze you in place so you may want to save your shame rage for that and then catch back up to them with spirit walk also use pharrell spirit only when uh, they're about to use their CCing cooldowns that way the duration is shortened rogue don't use your trinket don't do anything when you're just sapped that's what they want you to do they'll keep sapping you over and over again usually to make you waste it don't do anything only when you hear that sound uh, the kidney shot and all that once you see numbers going over your head then you sham rage immediately put down your stun totem immediately unleash elements and flame shock for that heal do not put down your fire elemental totem yet because they can vanish. Only use your wolves if you want to, if you feel you need to. Now, don't forget, when you put down the stun, he may try to run. That rhymed. So you're going to want to put down your stun, redirect it to wherever he is, and then freeze him in place so you can get to him if he's trying to weasel away. Now, once you get him down low enough, and if you don't suck, you will then he's going to vanish and he heal up so you do the same make sure you put down healing stream and heal up now when he comes back out of stealth you should most likely have sham rage back off a of cooldown or pretty close so use that again as well as your capacitor totem and then use your fire elemental totem and then magma totem now once he uses his uh cloak of shadows then you're going to want to ascend to get that extra damage in and that's pretty much it on beating a rogue now the warrior as before they can't go invisible like a hunter so put down your healing stream totem take out your elemental totem use your magma totem as it's counting from three and down and or when your enemy is starting to approach you in arena now the difference is especially if you're dueling you're going to want to drop your capacitor totem as soon as it gets down to one and or go because they're most likely going to jump back and then charge you and they're going to, and they're most likely they're going to be stunned it almost works every time and then you pretty much just go ham from there now if they use blade storm or uh, reta retaliation freeze them in place use spirit walk now you can't freeze him in place if he's blade storming, but use spirit walk and run around the warrior, not too far away. You want to stay just within range to where he can't hit you, but also to where he can't charge you again. And that is pretty much uh, how to beat a warrior while doing your the rotation of which I've already teached you how to do. Don't use hex on the warrior unless you need to.